I was given this watch when I was 12 years old, and uh, my dad gave it to me, and it's a uh, And he said, my brother owned it. What happened to your brother? He died. How'd he die? Pneumonia. Before penicillin. I carried it to school as a sixth grader. Didn't lose it. Uh, still runs. Keeps its own time. been in my office. I'd like to, I carried it through grade school for a couple years. And uh, <clears throat> so this is the, I was talking to somebody on the phone the other day and they said, you're really brave. I said, the bravest thing is, is to live in the silence and in the darkness. <clears throat> so when I was it's interesting, I had one of those moments a week ago. This concert was supposed to be in March, because that's when my birthday is. But the Brothers Four had a job, and you go where your paycheck goes, or sort of like that. And then April, something happened, and then the date that was available was May 13th. And then last week, I looked at the calendar and realized that just about this time, 20 years ago, on May 13th was the last time I talked to my dad. And he had a heart attack the next morning and died, over two weeks later. And, uh, and so he'd written some stuff that, that uh, in the previous couple years that you could only read uh, on, in his long hand, in a, in, a, in a blank book a friend had given him, that you could only read if you were a druggist <laughs> or a member of the family. So I typed him out, wrote an introduction, gave it to some members of the family. My mother gave it to the minister after, before the memorial and said, read anything you'd like. And he, my, the minister re read about my father's time, and what, what my father wrote about being in a mental institution when I was born. And it was the first time in about 90 years that this family secret with my brother, with my uncle Peter, who had died in a mental institution, was spoken public out loud in my father's own words. And I was finally free to no longer live in the silence, to no longer live in the darkness. I had no idea what that meant 20 years ago. But after the first year after my dad died, I spent every day thinking about him. And on the first anniversary in my mother's living room, we say, I did a 42 new songs called The Season of the Heart. And then Bill, some people came up, a lot of people were there for the, for the musical memoir in Seattle that was at the uh, Richard Hugo House. And the last song, May we know we're firmly rooted, also know we are set free. Always make room for the magic. Marvel at the mystery. May we hold on to each other. Though we're sometimes far apart. All oh, find ways to stay open to the lesson, blessings of the heart. May we have the strength inside us to sustain us in the night. May we have faith in the darkness. As we struggle for the light, may we discover joy and wonder all the places that we are and find ways to stay open to the blessings of the heart. May we find the road we are on be going home. May the road 
pieces of our lives in time be made whole. May we trust both joy and sorrow by the candle in the dark. Embrace love, receive the blessings of the heart. May the road, may we find life doesn't scare us and the filler to the end. May we be kind and gentle, we won't pass this way again. May we know we are connected to the earth and with the stars and between them share the blessings of the heart. pieces of our lives in time be made whole. May we trust both joy and sorrow, light a candle in the dark, embrace love, receive the blessings of the heart. Embrace love, receive the blessings of the heart. And so 20 years ago, I started out on a journey that I thought would last maybe a year. And um, it's, it's over tonight in a certain way, as we light the last campfire. And uh, it's, uh, but it started out, what I realized is what happens when you're born into situations that through nobody's fault and nobody's intention, when you're born into situations that are scary or uncomfortable or confusing or anxiety producing, you, you do what newborns do, you make it about you. And, uh, and so, what I realized, what, it took a while to realize how baked in those things are, how baked in the silence can be, and how hard it is to find the language to talk about when things have been sort of there. And, uh, and so, somebody said, don't be afraid to put on your glasses, so. <laughs> When I hear all we got of fear is fear itself Think of all of those times I was afraid of myself Didn't know why I was feeling the way that I felt Dealing how I was dealing with the cards I was dealt Then one day I found both a will and a way Start looking at those fears, begin giving them names more than I knew them, the less I was afraid And the power to haunt me simply was not the same My fears don't scare me like they used to Once I found what fears are most afraid of You see, they hate being faced, exposed or embraced By truth, light or love Fears scare me most when they hide in the dark When I know that they're out there but don't know what they are To meet them and love them, that can be awfully hard But to shine a light on them is a very good start It's something to learn how to live with my fears Not simply living in them like I've done all those years when what I'm afraid of becomes plated and clear, the power that haunts me appears to disappear. Fears don't scare me like they used to. Once I found what fears I'm most afraid of, you see they hate being faced, exposed or embraced by truth, by scare me like 
they used to Once I found what fears I'm most afraid of You see they hate being faced Exposed or being embraced By truth Lies